I was recently bounced off a bouncy castle whilst trying to prevent a bouncident. <laughs> <laughs> What's a bouncident? It's an incident involving a bounce, and you put the two together to create bouncident. Bounce sure, so it's, it's a derivative of accident, not incident. Well, obviously, an accident is an incident, oh. and a bouncident is an incident. Was this bouncident an accident? <laughs> <laughs> it was a bouncident waiting to happen. <laughs> How did you go about preventing the bouncident? <laughs> That might or might not have happened. <laughs> I'll tell you everything. <laughs> let, me, let me set the scene for you. Uh. It's early summer. Um, it was the birthday party of a small child. Was you invited or just turned up? Uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> look, look let, let's, let's be clear. There's a children's party in a church hall. Yeah. I'm yeah. attending because it's the party of my... Nephew, yeah, and there's a bouncy castle. Whoa, well, whoa! Well, in the church hall. I know, I've never indoors. Seen yes, that. yes, an indoor bouncy castle. Indoors. Yes. How no, big was there it? wasn't. No, there. How did they get it in the door? <laughs> that's, a, they... that's a fire hazard. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. How did they get it in the door? We've got him. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> church hall is that where the service is being held? No. This no, is no. the adjacent. This, this the church hall was our prime minister during oh. the war. <laughs> 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 Now, I don't like bouncy castles, because I, I think they're dangerous. Right. And my little boy went on after I had expressly told him not to. Well, he oh. disobeyed your orders. <laughs> <laughs> the worst father I've ever... The most incompetent father I've ever... <laughs> well, I don't like to say, but I think the boy's better off in care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is very upsetting. <laughs> he clambered on, unbeknownst to me. Yeah. And he's going back and forth. So I get on and I get my little boy, yeah. uh, George, who is, who is not even two, yeah. and I pick him up. All right. OK? And I'm trying now to hold my little boy yeah. whilst being bounced <laughs> by these evil children. <laughs> my wife is stood on terra firma. And as I'm coming off the bouncy castle, a particularly hefty child <laughs> bounces, sending me up, <laughs> holding my son. I hurtle through the air. Luckily, I come to my feet like Spider-Man, but the impetus is too much. I surge forward and headbutt my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, having the bouncy dent, that I was trying to avoid. <laughs> so, what are you going to say, Lee? What do we think? Yes, I think it's you true. You think it's true? If a two-year-old had clambered on, you might well go and get your two-year-old off. I think that's true. Well, then I must say true. You say true, David Steen? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, yeah. you say it's true. Well, it's actually... True! Oh. <laughs> Attention mounts! Yes, it's true. I was recently bounced off a bouncy castle while trying to prevent a bouncident. When I'm in a play, as part of my nightly vocal warm-up, I perform sets of scales in the voice of a chimpanzee. <laughs> okay, will you give us a quick rendition? Of course. <laughs> Just you just go through oh, the scale as a chimpanzee. Do you just do this for plays? Because I've been next to you in a dressing room, I think, for a gig, and I didn't hear chimpanzee. I used to do a singing tape of oh, and then what? That was lovely. That was lovely. Yeah. And um, <laughs> la, la, la. That really is lovely. Don't blow your nose. <laughs> Where did you get this from? Who, who was it? Another celebrity that gave you the no, idea? No, no. It was one night I was doing it, and the other actor uh, said when I, I started going, hoo, 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 so just relax. Hoo, hoo, hoo. He said you sound like a chimpanzee. So then I went, hoo, 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 and I found it really opened up the diaphragm, and, and it actually can you, worked. Can you go the other way? 
Can you go from the high note That's down what Dale was note? asking me earlier. Um... <laughs> Is he angry, Lee? Is he angry? Well, I, it's hard to tell what colour his face is, but can you go... <laughs> can you go... Can you go from the high... <laughs> oh, excellent. That is, no, can, that is good. Who was the actor who said you looked like a chimpanzee? Miranda, you know very well he didn't say I looked like a chimpanzee. <laughs> You're not going to trip me up like that. It was Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Branagh gave you this idea. He did. Yeah, laugh it up, Balding. <laughs> <laughs> I know your reaction was. Tonight. The reaction was how preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the breakfast cereal would be in a play with Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> Yet it was true. <laughs> so what are you thinking? Mitchell, Winton, Bacon. <laughs> I think it's true. You think I it's think true? It's true. Yeah. Do you think it's true? Oh, Dan? absolutely. He does it yeah. so well. I think it would sort of help. Yeah. Uh, what about what about you? Balding, Mac, Hart. <laughs> that, sounds like a, that sounds a series of illnesses, that to me. So... <laughs> I'm afraid you've got Balding, Mac, Hart. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? I think he's probably lying. I think it's true. Imagine you're you saying and true, you're in the wings tonight. having I... a right old hoot doing that yeah. together. You say... No, well, I'm going to go with what? Claire. You're going to say lie? Yeah. You're saying lie? You're saying true? true. true. It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> It's a lie. When I'm in a play, I don't perform sets of scales in the voice of a chimpanzee. <laughs> this is the sweatshirt that my wife and I put on together when we are cozying up on a chilly evening. We call it the cuddle jumper. <laughs> Demonstration with Nick. Would that be okay? <laughs> can we see a model? Can, can Nick, can you model with Rob the cuddle jumper? Prefer not to. Well, yeah. <laughs> we all prefer not to. That's why I got in quick. Because <laughs> I know where it was heading. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, going to cuddle on with him, and you can. Uh... I have to get in there. <laughs> Come on, oh. Nick. <laughs> I know you've not done it before. Think of yourself as a bit of an apprentice with this. There we go. <laughs> Stick your. Quite nice, actually. All right. You can just sit in my lap, then. <laughs> right. Ooh. Ask. Who <laughs> wants to ask first? So, both teams. Um, Nick, how, how does it feel? Yeah, oh, that's my phone, by the way. <laughs> Hard to describe accurately. <laughs> Nick, will you help me and turn this way? Because. room is very drafty. So, we, oh, what are you doing? Whoa, 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 come back. It's very drafty. And we saw this on a shopping channel and we ordered it for a laugh. And it's actually, I mean, you'd have to admit, it's very cosy. It looks like, <laughs> it looks like a ventriloquist dummy now. Uh, I'll tell you what, Orville's let himself go, hasn't he? <laughs> So we ordered it, and we we don't wear it every night, but we do wear is, we do wear it sometimes. Is this the position you will be in, where the, your wife will be? No, on? because it, we have more than one chair in our television room, <laughs> so we so we sit on the sofa side by side. Sofa, wouldn't yeah, it? but we haven't got a sofa. Well, so that's we a can't. good question. Sure. You have more than one chair. Have you got more than one jumper? It's a cuddle jumper. <laughs> well, why why do you wear jumpers and cuddle up? Why did you get it in orange? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted that Guantanamo feel, you know. Do they have pants too? No. You could have pants, couldn't you? Three legs. Are you suggesting that you lose the pants? <laughs> Does the design lend itself to intimacy? Yes. Not tonight, it doesn't. <laughs> 
Time for a guess. What are you going to say, Lee? Uh, Miranda. I just really. I hope... want to get in your jumper now. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, okay. Rebecca, this you, does you, put you, some you, pressure you on you. Let's <laughs> <laughs> the mile of baby's trousers. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, I Lee? don't want to rush you, I'm really cosy. <laughs> so what are you saying, truth or lie? Um... <laughs> our other team member. Come over here. <laughs> do we think it's true or a lie? I don't know what the question is. The question is, does he cuddle, does he, does he cuddle up to his wife with In his jumper? jumper? No. No. <laughs> right, Nick. He's got strong thighs, this boy. Yeah, and you've got a very bony bum. What about you and Rebecca and Jack? What do you think? Um, I think it might be true. I think it's true. In a bizarre, okay. quick as you like. We'll, we'll go for true. You're then. saying true, and what are you saying? Oh, I forgot. Let's lie. go back and ask Nick. <laughs> we said it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Well, I can tell you, it's actually a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now what do we do? Oh. Thank goodness it's a lie. Uh, it isn't the sweatshirt that my wife and I put on together when we're cozying up on a chilly evening. <laughs> I, I used to put on a different voice on the telephone and pretend to be my own agent. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's have it, then. The yeah. voice? Imagine I've just yeah. rung up. Hello. Hello. I'm the uh, people that want to book Rob Ryden. Yes. <laughs> how, how much would he cost? Uh, his name, I used to call him Richard Knight. And Richard used to talk like this, and uh, he'd say, listen, uh, love to help you out, but at that price, we're really not going to make much movement. Um, <laughs> and I, I once did a charity gig, and... Uh, it's got... a lie. He's never done charity gigs. <laughs> and got, got money for it, because Richard said, listen, Rob's an angel, and if he knew I was doing this, he'd never forgive me, but I've got to get a bit of money, otherwise I wouldn't be doing my job. <laughs> did you have a real agent at the time? No. So, how many phone numbers? Do you have a separate phone number for your fake agent? Or no, was it just your normal I worked, phone? I used to work at the BBC in Cardiff. I was on the radio, I used to be a DJ. And if they got through to the office, I would then phone back under the guise. When it came right. to important meetings, did you have to, like, take a disguise? And <laughs> sit there and go, well, oh, Rob's in the toilet at the moment, but when he gets back, I'm sure he was just with I'll go and get him now. Was, uh, oh, I believe my agent said I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you've got an agent now, so why did you decide to... Well, um, I didn't have one. Yeah, I have one now, but I, I didn't have one then. What, made, what convinced you you needed one? Because, was it, it working? because it's very difficult to do your own negotiations and not come across as an horrible person when you're asking for money. But if it was Richard Knight saying, listen, I'm just doing this, Rob doesn't want money, but i got to get money for the guy. But they didn't know it was you. That's my whole point, you I know. idiot. That's I what I'm saying. <laughs> did you have anybody else on your books? <laughs> What's the sort of work that... Uh... Hosting things. This was back in about the late 80s when I was a local radio disc jockey. So Did the agent I... take a cut? <laughs> 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 Did the agent phone you to let you know they got the job? <laughs> no, I was the agent! Did you ever fall out with your agent? <laughs> yeah. No, it was me! <laughs> when you decided that this, this charade had to finish, did you take yourself out to dinner and tell yourself you were letting yourself go? <laughs> did you sign a contract? <laughs> Are you still in touch? <laughs> right, 
right, it's time to guess. Uh, first of all, Lee and those bastards. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what are you going to go for? I would say true. Uh, you think it's true? Mm. You're yeah. saying it's true? Yes, in the true. words of Rob Brydon, I think that's true. <laughs> right, say it's true. Um, David and these asses. Uh, what, do you, what do you say? That is so I true. Think I think it's true. It's, yeah. yeah, I think it's true. He thinks it's true, David. Very well. I... Let me buck the trend by telling you it's true. <laughs> uh, possession. Right. Pick it up first. Steady. <laughs> This is a prototype invention of mine that I'm hoping to release one day. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Brydon's World of Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Teams, questions? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a TV aerial for the bath, isn't it? <laughs> On first inspection, you'd think so. It's actually not. Don't tell us. Let us guess what it is. All right, try and guess what it is. Can you demonstrate how you would use it and see if we yes. can guess? Yeah, please do. Can I, can I come out? Is now, now a good you time? Did, you did <laughs> <laughs> He's cleaning something. Oh. Oh, footprints. painting. He's cleaning painting. Footprints. You're painting. Oh. 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 Painting a dotted circle. <laughs> he's, not, he's doing I the, haven't what? finished. Hang on, he's painted a circle or has he cleaned the circle? <laughs> He's patting children on the head. Incidentally, I just, I've just remembered something. Mm. This isn't a mime show. Oh. Tell us what you were doing. <laughs> it's, a it's a thing for kids. I've got a lot of children, and it's an idea I came up with. And it's just a big kind of painting stick. It's just a silly painting stick. I'm very interested, actually, to know what you think, Deborah. I think it's Five very... grand, that's all I need. That, oh, you just need five grand? Anybody? Anybody? I think probably no, you, you in particular. Oh, me? <laughs> You're quite well known for being rich. No, seriously, <laughs> all, all jokes Do you know aside. How you get rich? <laughs> probably not De 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 Deborah, no. in Deborah like stop that. talking to the idiot at the end. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Talk to this idiot. Yeah, oh, Seriously. Right. Oh. oh, don't <laughs> buy into that. What do you mean don't buy into that? Don't buy into that. No, not this. <laughs> buy into this. <laughs> don't you buy into you that. You've been rubbish on dragons. No, see this. Don't buy into that. Don't buy into this. Deborah, what do you think? Seriously, what do you think? Serious. Seriously. Seriously. No, it think. wouldn't be wood, like this is a prototype. It would be a gaily coloured plastic, maybe with some kind of laminate cover on it with zigzag. Kids would it love be zigzags. nothing like that? It would be quite a lot like this. <laughs> Can you imagine if you asked for a Nintendo Wii and Dad came home with that? <laughs> There's not much you can do apart from do circles, though, is it? Yes, there's plenty you can do. That's a... <laughs> You can do that with a normal spoon. With this invention, you can do this. Yeah? Another... <laughs> oh, you mean another one of those circles you were telling us about? But is it a circle, Lee? Well, it's, it's starting to become a circle, yeah. You think it's a circle? Wait a minute. It looks like it uh -huh. is. <laughs> oh. oh, hello. Do you know what? I'm suddenly... Oh, I'm it's in. I am in. <laughs> what would you call it? Four sponges on a stick. <laughs> 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 Rob's colourful stick. Hey, hey! <laughs> I'm not falling for this again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you going to say? I've seen a lot of inventions. Yes. That's... That's not even That's an invention. Not... Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be maverick here and suddenly I think it's a good idea. No, I do. It I is a good idea. It's, it's great fun. I'm starting to look forward to actually borrowing that and playing with my kids with it. <laughs> what are you going to say? I say that I think Rob is mad enough to think that's a good idea. And we should say that's true. You're saying it's true. David Mitchell, what is your team saying? Rubbish. You... Absolute rubbish. Do you think it's a lie? A lie. I, he's, he's mad enough to have come up with that, I think. <laughs> My instinct is that it's a lie. OK, you say it's a lie. You say it's true. Yeah. It's actually... a lie. Oh. <laughs> oh. I always throw the first and last biscuit in a packet away without eating them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because the one at the top, it started when the one at the top is crumbly, so I used to throw that, often it's got crushed, and then I don't, can't explain why the bottom one... <laughs> <is> the bottom <laughs> one. <laughs> Do you mean you throw the bottom one away before you start eating them, or just when you get to the bottom one you throw it away? All right, here's the packet of biscuits, OK? <laughs> Take the top off with the little, little bit of stringy kind yeah. of... Mm -hmm. wrapping. Which actually reveals sort of two or three... Two or biscuits. three come yeah. away in it in a quite yeah. a satisfying motion. Yes. Yeah. The third one is normally relatively unscathed by its experiences Which during transit. Are we talking about? I take those, let me talk. I take <laughs> them out. 
suddenly I'm on Bill Turnbull's side. Um, <laughs> I take them out. The top biscuit is often damaged. I discard it. I you then take... Discard the... it, what, throw it away? Throw it away in the bin, in yes. the bin. Waste it. Or leave it all for the dog. I'll put it on the floor in, in the kitchen. Then, at the bottom, because I'm taking them out to put them in the have biscuit... Have you got a jar. dog? Yes, I have. <laughs> ben, he's not going to say no now. He's quite good at this. <laughs> I've got a black lamb. Oh, very good. Thank you. Love you. So, <laughs> where you do <laughs> black experiments. <laughs> Take the biscuits. I'm getting them out to put them into the into the clear perspex uh, Kellner jar, whatever it's called. If what? you're worried about biscuits getting crushed and misshapen and crumbly, why do you put them in a biscuit jar? Well, that's the is safest that's place. No, it's not. A packet is like a, a car park for biscuits. It's <laughs> it's all perfectly, isn't it? If you put them in a jar, you're going to oh, get exactly the kind of problem you're trying to avoid. You think I'm putting them in the jar like this? I give my wife the jar at one end of the room. <laughs> Then stand at the other end and go, are you ready? <laughs> That's not how I put no, them in here. You, you take them out one by one and carefully place them no, in the bottom no, of the jar no, David, like a maniac. No, David, I take them out <laughs> and I slide them into the, what, to the, to the jar and they rest happily. What biscuits are they? Uh, chocolate hobnobs or, ideally, the ones I don't have to do it with, because I only do it with the ones you take out, is the chocolate Leibniz, because they come in a, in a box. They're usually unscathed. You've just said that you give chocolate hobnobs to your dog. Chocolate is poisonous to dogs. <laughs> Have you not met his best dog? <laughs> well, now you mentioned he wasn't it a is, black actually. lab when we got him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a golden retriever. So just to absolutely establish, you're taking out the biscuit, you're discarding it because it's crumbled. If it's not crumbled, you tend to throw it away, but not always. Then you'll slide them out like some sort of magician on your hand like that. You'll get the jar, you'll insert them in, unless it's a Leibniz, wherever the bloody hell they are. <laughs> they go in, it comes off, there's one left, it's not damaged, give it to the dog that used to be brown that's now black. That is what you're telling us is what's happening in your house. You're mental, of course it's true. <laughs> I think that's a lie. I think it's a lie. You're going to say lie? Yeah. Uh, go on then. I'll go with my team. Say that's a lie. Yeah. Lie. David. Well, yes, I think I can believe it. Yes, yeah, I don't I, like I the broken biscuits on the end. Yeah. So what like are you saying? So one. we'll say true. You're true. saying true, right? Yeah. You say true. You say lie. Well, it's actually a lie. <laughs> I once stole Catherine Zeta Jones's dinner money. <laughs> What well, of course, you're both Welsh, so you presumably went to the same school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I applaud that, that thinly veiled racism. <laughs> what age were you? Um, I would have been um, school age, young, about, I don't know, ten. Catherine Zeta Jones is about. Th she's 40 odd. She's well, I'm 45. She's she, she was younger than me at school. And, well, and, and, now, and is even younger now. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so you were, you were ten. You were ten. And she was about five. <laughs> you stole a five-year-old little girl's dinner money at the, the age, age of ten. ten. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> no, um, I, I didn't steal it as such. It was it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> what, right. What was the misunderstanding? How did it? How did her money end up in your hand? Oh, well, I arrived at school that day, and as I walked into the school, Catherine Zeta Jones's mother saw me and said, "I've forgotten to give Catherine her dinner money. Would you give her the dinner money?" And gave the dinner money to me, and uh, I forgot to give her the money, and I spent the money on sweets. And what was this school? It was called Swansea. Swansea. <laughs> Swansea. Swansea School. Swansea School. It was called Dumbarton. Oh, not Swansea then, Dumbarton. In Swansea. Mm. Oh right. Have you met her since? Like on Yes, the... I have actually. Yes. And have you met? Have you had a hilarious? <laughs> oh, this tell time. us about when Here's you met her. Here's your free quid. I'll tell you uh, that when I when I met her. This is true. When I met her, <laughs> which is not to say. <laughs> Which is not to say. Which is not to say. The other one is true. Um, I was. I met her at the Baftas when she won for Chicago, and she had an American accent. That's the story. Oh right. So give me my three pound back, Bryden. <laughs> so what are you going to say? Truth or lie? Lie. 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 It's got to be a lie. lie. Because, you say uh, lie. You're too. Yeah. You're too an honest man not to have gone back and given it. Given it to us. So, David's team. I think it might be true. I'll go, I'll go with what Ruth says. Yeah, all right. We'll say it's true. Saying it's true. Yeah, yeah. You say it's a lie, you say it's true. So it is 
True. Uh, yes, it's true. I did once steal Catherine Zeta Jones's dinner money. Uh, it was a, a long time ago when we were kids. I, I now feel old age creeping up on me, as does Catherine, every morning when <laughs> Michael fancies a cuddle. <laughs> I once simultaneously worked as both the DJ and the newsreader on local radio, using a different accent for each job. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this is true. <laughs> Indeed. What, what were the two accents? When I was a DJ, I used to... I was younger, so I had kind of a higher voice, and I used to kind of talk a little bit like that and say, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> the newsreader, I would talk a bit more like that. So that's um, not the accent, that's, yeah, just, that's the just the tone. That's the tone, yeah, the Well, if, if you'd let me finish... <laughs> I had a slightly Welsh tone. To, to the newsreader, because I am Welsh, and I would sort of give it more of a sort of Anthony Hopkins, sort of, uh, in other news coming in at the moment, there's been a horrific pile-up on the M4 motorway, ambulances are on their way there right now. I would just do it more slowly, <laughs> give it a slight more Welsh lilt. Did you ever have any banter between yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> no, I never did, no. What's the station again? BBC Radio Wales. Was this a time of great cutbacks at BBC Radio <laughs> Wales? Why couldn't they It's always afford... a time of great cutbacks at Radio <laughs> Wales. They Did couldn't you... afford a newsreader. Are they very expensive, Krishnan? Newsreaders? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of Krishnan doing that on television as well, just getting a wig on and running over to the weather. <laughs> <laughs> the first time it happened was, was sort of accident. It was when the, the newsreader didn't come in. It was a very early show. It was the 6.30 in the morning to 7.30. And the newsreader, at one time, when there was snow, didn't come. And they said, will you read the news? And I did it for a laugh did it in a different voice after the jingle, which is not what they, they were saying, and then just kind of stuck with it. Did you read the sport? Uh, no, there was a sports guy called David Cartwright. Interesting they didn't give him the news job. We've already established, Gabby, that you are little better than a thief. <laughs> so <laughs> for you to sit there taking the moral high ground, when I stepped in to save a colleague who'd got stuck and couldn't make it in, frankly, is a bit rich, and I expect more support from a team captain than I'm getting at the moment. <laughs> Nothing from this fellow who's sitting here reading my thoughts, going, I wonder what he's thinking right now. I can't imagine. <laughs> Where are you, big fella? Because, um... <laughs> frankly, David, now would be a good time to join in. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's harder and harder to get impressions on the television, but uh, <laughs> this isn't the place. Um, I'm, totally, I'm totally behind you. I would just like to publicly say how plausible I think everything that you've said is. <laughs> That's exactly what I'd have done in your position. Um, you know. So, Lee, you're going to have to come to a decision well, of some sort. I, I thought that was an assured performance, and I, I wish it were true, but I don't think it's true because it's... that would be silly. Yes. <laughs> what do you think, Gabby? I think it's a lie. Robert? I think it's a lie. OK, we think that's a lie. They're saying, saying a lie. They are saying it's a lie, in so fact, the truth, please. it's <laughs> a lie. It is a lie, well done. <laughs> Well deduced. Uh, it is a lie. Rob did not simultaneously work as the DJ and the newsreader on local radio. To be a local radio DJ, you have to have enthusiasm, poise and the belief in your heart of hearts that Slough actually matters. 